The Andretti name will not be returning to Formula 1 as its interest in taking over the Sauber-run Alfa Romeo team is believed to have come to nothing. Andretti had been keen to find a way into Formula 1 and was pursuing a takeover of Sauber's controlling company and the Alfa Romeo team as a result. But it emerged over the United States Grand Prix weekend that the situation had not progressed positively. And now we understand there will be no deal at all. Andretti had the chance to purchase a majority stake in Islero Investments, widely reported to be €350 million Euros for 80% of the company that owns Sauber Motorsport and Sauber Engineering. A deal looked possible as Sauber's owner, Swedish billionaire Finn Rousing, appeared to have named a price that Andretti was willing to meet. But the Andretti side seemed to believe the deal was further advanced than Sauber. That confidence led some in the F1 paddock to suggest it was not just a formality, but was already agreed. We learned in Austin that the chances of a deal going through were not as high as previously thought. It appears that once the negotiations reached a more important stage, Sauber's true price put Andretti off. The suggestion is that Andretti was willing to pay the initial fee that Rousing wanted, but not a €250 million Euro five-year guarantee paid up front. This guarantee would be to ensure Sauber had the funding to run at the budget cap in case there was any issue with sponsorship. That appears to have put a total price on the team that Andretti is not willing to meet, and multiple sources have now indicated to us that there will not be a deal. Sauber has routinely refused to comment on the situation. Last weekend, Sauber CEO and Alpha F1 team principal Frederick Vasseur was asked for an update on the Andretti deal. He replied, I have absolutely no comment. It's not my business. I'm not involved in this kind of discussion and we have absolutely no comments to make as we did in the past. I'm focused on running the team. It's not my business at all. What this means for Alfa Romeo's 2022 driver lineup is unclear, but Formula 2 driver Guan Yu Zhou has been considered the favourite for some time. Andretti's IndyCar driver Colton Herta was linked to the seat if Andretti bought into the team, but he never seemed a realistic option for next season because he's ineligible for a super licence. Though he was trying to keep quiet, Vasseur hinted last week that the uncertainty over who would own the team may have played a part in the delay in confirming who Valtteri Bottas' teammate will be. With the team ownership set to remain unchanged, Vasseur should be free to cement a Sauber-led lineup. That is likely to mean Bottas and Zhou, with the well-backed Chinese driver potentially only on a one-year deal. Formula 2 championship leader Oscar Piastri is considered to be an outside contender to beat Zhou to the seat, as he lacks the same level of funding. Meanwhile, current Alpha driver Antonio Giovinazzi is not expected to retain his drive. If the numbers are correct and Sauber's total asking price was around 600 million euros, then you might be thinking, who on earth is going to pay that for one of F1's worst teams? We think we have the answer for you, but first we need to interrupt to say something. We're blown away by our channel's support, which is why we're able to take big stories like Andretti and Sauber and turn them into videos like this. Most of you watching aren't subscribers and we'd love for you to change that. It takes two seconds and it makes a huge difference for us. If you want to see more of our videos and never miss something we publish, just hit the red button and turn on notifications. If you are already subscribed, thank you for your continued support and thanks for waiting. We'll stop interrupting your video. The failed Andretti Sauber negotiations come down to what looks like a high valuation. But there is some method to the apparent madness and this is why the team itself probably won't be unhappy that Andretti's not taking over. Alfa Romeo's renewed commercial deal and new funding was set to increase Alfa's running budget in 2022, bringing it up to the budget cap of around $145 million for the first time. So this guarantee that Rousing is believed to have asked for would effectively protect Salba should anything be jeopardised. Rousing is a very private person, so his true motives are hard to gauge. But we know he's very wealthy, very fond of the team and a huge fan of F1. He's not a motivated seller and could bankroll this team forever if he really wanted to. This isn't someone who needs to sell in order to make a quick buck. That meant he was always likely to protect Sauber in the event of any sale. If he went through with a deal, he would have to sell to someone with a serious plan for the team because he was not going to risk its future. 
Andretti would seem like a very serious organisation, especially if it entered F1, but an F1 team's prospects are never a short-term project. Even an organisation that has Andretti's reputation has no guarantee of success. There are also logistical complications to making an American team work in F1, especially when it's buying an operation based in Switzerland. Andretti has high standards. It wants to win, but Alfa Romeo is currently a long way from winning. Even its hoped-for step in 2022 is only meant to re-establish it as a regular top 10 team. What would happen if Andretti bought the team and didn't get that short-term success? Or worse, felt it had overestimated the team's potential? Then Andretti could get disillusioned and want to sell. That would trigger uncertainty and eliminate all the stability that Sauber has built over the last few years. These risks might not be great, but they do exist, so it makes sense that Rousing wanted to have some kind of protection against them. Rousing and Longbow Finance bought Salba in 2016, did the Alfa Romeo deal, and invested heavily to expand the team's staff count and improve its infrastructure. Salba is ultimately in a healthy place as a result, which means abandoning talks with Andretti makes no obvious difference to its prospects. But selling with no assurances that the team's medium-term future would be secured would be a dangerous move. In Austin, Vasseur talked about the team's financial state. He said, if you compare with two years ago, we needed to have a cash injection, but the amount is reducing year after year. F1 is going in the right direction, we have real interest from big sponsors for the future, and commercial rights are also going up. I don't know if we will reach the break even next year, but we will go in the right direction. We've already discussed what could motivate Rousing to sell. If it was a good deal for the team and he was able to retain a minority stake that let him stay quietly involved, it could happen. But this is not the time to be handing over an F1 team entirely and just walking away, especially not one that's required investment in recent years and is only now on the brink of potentially paying it back. The new for 2021 budget cap and revised agreement for a fairer distribution of prize money have cut the spending of F1's biggest teams and increased the share of F1's revenues that smaller teams are entitled to. New technical rules next year are designed to simplify the cars and make the championship more competitive. The intended effect is for F1 to become a more equal championship from a financial and sporting perspective and put a rough price on fighting for wins and titles. F1 has sought to strengthen the value of the 10 teams by making a spot on the grid more exclusive, which is why it incorporated an anti-dilution fund, whereby a new team could have to pay $200 million shared across the existing teams. When F1 was pursuing its various cost-saving measures and ways to better reward smaller teams, one of the main arguments was that it would secure those that are independently owned. F1 even acknowledged at the time that the likes of Rousing needed assurances that he would not have to foot his team's bills indefinitely. F1's various changes have courted fresh investment across the grid, including Ineos buying one third of the Mercedes F1 team, McLaren selling a significant minority stake to a US consortium, and Williams being bought by US investment firm Doralton Capital. Last weekend, Mercedes boss Toto Wolff indirectly made the perfect argument for why Rousing should be keeping control of Sauber for now. Wolf has increased his own share in the Mercedes team and reckons all the teams will become profitable very soon. He said, I wouldn't sell a team. On the contrary, with Ineos coming in, I bought an additional 3% and I'm very happy about that. So if we can't expect Wolf to sell a team without good reason, why should we have expected that from an F1 loving man who is part of one of Europe's richest families? Not having the Andretti name on the F1 grid will be a shame, but as long as the team it wanted to buy still has a strong future, it's not going to make much material difference. Are you sad to miss out on an Andretti F1 team? Do you think Sauber's making a mistake? Join the debate by having your say in the comments, hit the like button if you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you next time.